Hello, YouTubers. This is Triple Seven Die Hard Forever coming at you with another highly anticipated and highly recommended model as I continue to play catch up. Today, I'll be doing a review on the Gemini Jets Air Lingus Airbus A330 300 in their current updated revised livery scheme in a 1 200 scale model. I purchased this model from Easy Toys and their website address is www.easytoys.com. But first, before I go into details about this particular aircraft model, please allow me to share with you some information about the history of Aer Lingus and how they actually came about as an airline carrier. Aer Lingus is an Irish-based airline that was founded on April 15, 1936 with a startup capital of £100,000 and was registered as an airline on May 22, 1936 and officially commenced operations five days later on May 27, 1936 with the airline's first flight was from Dublin, Ireland to Bristol, England, using a six-seater de Havilland DH-84 Dragon Bob plane named Lolar, as the name Aer Lingus was actually proposed by Richard F. O'Connor, who was a county surveyor of Cork Island, as well as an aviation enthusiast, as the angelicization Irish word Aer Lingus actually means air fleet as the airline was officially established as the national carrier under the Air Navigation and Transport Act of 1936. Aer Lingus is the national flag carrier airline for the country of Ireland and the country's second largest operating airline after Ryanair, whereas the corporate headquarters of Aer Lingus, along with the airline's main hub and base of operations, is located on the grounds of Dublin Airport, which is located approximately 6.2 miles north of Dublin Island in the Dublin suburb of Collinstown, Fingal County. Aer Lingus also has a United States corporate headquarters office that's located in the Long Island town of Jericho, New York, which is located approximately 29 miles east of the midtown Manhattan section of New York City, New York. Aer Lingus also has operating base hubs that's located at George Best Belfast City Airport located in Belfast County, Northern Ireland, Cork Airport located in Farmers Cross, Cork City Island, and Shannon Airport located in County Clare, Shannon Island. And at the time of this video review posting, Aer Lingus currently flies to 93 destinations across Asia, Europe and North America with an all Airbus operating fleet of 53 aircraft that includes 13 Airbus A330s in which three of those are the Airbus A330-200 while the remaining 10 are the Airbus A330-300s including this one you're looking at here with no unfulfilled orders pending on neither aircraft types. Also at the time of this video review posting, Aer Lingus is one of 59 airlines in the world of aviation that currently operates as a certified four-star airline carrier, according to the international airline review firm, Skytrax Magazine, and the Airbus destination code for Aer Lingus on this particular aircraft is 02. All right, everyone, let's take a look at the front of the box here, and what you're looking at is the engraved Gold Gemini 200 decal, the Aer Lingus billboard title, the updated revised logo of Aer Lingus, you see it to the right of that, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, the 1 200 scale die cast model aircraft, as well as the item number information you see at the front of the box. All right, now you see at the back of the box, you see the engraved Gold Gemini 200 decal, as well as some more information you see there, as well as the social media pages of Gemini Jets. You can pause and read that information if you like. In the meantime, I'm going to keep this moving, okay? All right, now you're looking at the top of the box, and what you see is the engraved Gold Gemini 200 decal, the DOT collectible model and warning information, as well as the item number information you see at the top of the box. And now you're looking at the bottom of the box, and all you see at the bottom of the box is the engraved Gold Gemini 200 decal. All right, now you're looking at the left side of the box, and what you see there is the engraved Gold Gemini 200 decal, the 1 200 scale diecast model and item number information, the computer generated picture of the aircraft, as well as the aircraft type on the left side of the box. Now you're looking at the right side of the box. It's pretty much the same information on the left side of the box I just showed you earlier on, okay? All right, now you're looking at the actual model stand that actually came with the model. See the bottom is very strong and sturdy. And you see the top part of the model stand here. You see that black pattern there, folks. The sole purpose of this black pattern is that it not only protects your model, it also prevents from being damaged or scratched when and if you decide you want to put your aircraft on this particular model stand. 
Now you're looking at this plastic bag, and what you see in this plastic bag are the actual gear replacement doors for this particular uh, aircraft model, including the two little toothpicks for these gear replacement doors. Please stay tuned as I go into detail for the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors for this particular aircraft model, okay? All right, with all that information out of the way about the history of Aer Lingus and how they actually came about as an airline carrier, plus all the details here at the front of the box, as well as the information at the back of the box, plus the accessories such as the uh, model stand that came with the model, as well as the gear replacement doors inside a plastic bag. With no further ado, everyone, here is the model out of the packaging box. Check it out. There it is, everyone. The Gemini Jets Aer Lingus Airbus A330-300 in their current updated revised livery scheme in a 1-200 scale model. All right, everyone. Allow me to share with you some information about this updated revised livery scheme and how it actually came about. This is the updated revised livery scheme of Aer Lingus, which actually became the livery scheme that eventually replaced the carrier's iconic 1996 Shamrock livery scheme, which was unveiled on January 17, 2019 on the grounds of Dublin Airport in Dublin, Ireland, as this updated revised livery scheme also features a brand new updated revised typeface which happens to be the airline's name, Aer Lingus, the updated refreshed Shamrock as its logo, as well as a brand new updated color livery scheme. Whereas the airline's updated revised livery scheme consists of a white fuselage, as well as a new color palette that also consists of two contrasting typical shades of teal green, the rich teal green, the dark green that's actually displayed on the Aer Lingus billboard titles, the engine columns, the wingtip devices, as well as the rear of the fuselage, represent strength and confidence, while the light green teal that's actually displayed on the airline's logo, as well as the cheat line stripe that's displayed at the rear of the fuselage, modernizes the design and reflects the airline's value carrier proposition, while contrasting teal and light green of the Shamrock logo represents a combination of strength, confidence, and modernity, as the logo actually resembles that of uh, three heart-shaped leaves plus a stem tilt that actually reflects the warmth hospitality of Aer Lingus. And the very first aircraft that actually begun sporting this livery scheme in the Aer Lingus fleet was an Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft which bared the registration ship number EI-EDY which happened to be this aircraft you're looking at here. And at the time of this video review posting, the entire Aer Lingus fleet is painted in this updated revised livery scheme as this livery scheme was actually created and designed by the consultancy firm of Lippincott, whose global headquarters is located in New York City. So, with all that information out of the way about this particular livery scheme and how it came about, with no further ado, everyone, let's get down to the nitty gritty and let me show you all the details on this aircraft mount. Shall we? Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front of the aircraft here on the port slash left side. We're going to start at the front nose landing gears here, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the partial registration ship number on that landing gear door, DY. See the pewter tubes and the static ports, the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. I'm going to give you a better visual view of those details later on in the model review. But right underneath the, uh, the cockpit windows is the name of the aircraft, St. Munchen slash Mansing. Well, Mansing Mac Setnai, who was angelicized to St. Munchen, was actually a peculiar saint who founded the original St. Munchen's Church in Limerick City, Ireland in 630 AD, where the Church of Ireland Church of that particular name still stands today. As the, feast of, as the feast day of St. Munchen is actually celebrated on January 3rd of every year, as Aer Lingus decided to christen this particular aircraft by paying an honorary tribute to this particular individual. Okay? And then you slide over this way on the right side of the L1 entrance door is the aircraft type, the A330-300 decal, which is this decal you're looking at here. Aer Lingus took delivery of their very first Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number EI-DUZ on June 26, 2007, and took delivery of their last Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft, which bared the registration ship number EI-EIL on March 23, 2021. Aer Lingus has registered and operated as many as 11 of these jetliners in their fleet. 
And at the time of this video review posting, all 10 of Aer Lingus Airbus A330-300s are currently operating in service as this particular aircraft has since become the airline's official flagship jetliner for the Dublin-based carrier. All right, now we stay at the front of the aircraft and right above the windows is the Aer Lingus billboard title, which is this title you see right here. And that's the name of the airline as the Angelicization Irish word Aer Lingus actually means air fleet. And then you're talking about the updated revised Aer Lingus logo that sits next to the Aer Lingus billboard title, which is happened to be this logo right there. And this is the updated revised corporate logo of Aer Lingus, as you can see displayed on the L2 entrance door right here. Inside the wingtip devices, I'm going to show you that now. There, as well as on the tail fin of the aircraft. There, it's actually called a shamrock which is a young sprig or a small botanical, botanical plant species of a clover plant flower that's also considered the national flower and the country symbol of Ireland as the updated revised shamrock logo represents a combination of strength, confidence, and modernity as this logo actually resembles that of a three heart shaped leaves plus a stem tilt that actually reflects the warmth hospitality of Aer Lingus and has been the airline's signature trademark logo since it was introduced in 1965, as this logo can be visibly seen on just about every Aer Lingus aircraft that's currently flying in their fleet today. All right, we have to see the aircraft looking under the wings, and what you see is the side visual view of the landing bogey gears here, which includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. But more important, you see these nice massive engines here, and these are the General Electric CF6-80E1A4 turbofan type engines that are actually used on this particular Air Lingus Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft. You also see the, uh, the engine cones right there, more realistic and appealing. Now, we're going to turn this aircraft model around. We're going to actually find out if the turbo fan blades do actually spin. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at the front visual view of these engines here on the port slash left side. So, we're going to see if the turbo fan blades do spin over here. Oh, man, a little challenge there. Uh, unfortunately, this one does not. But you got the front visual view of the landing bogey gears, including the landing gear struts, as well as the landing gear doors. And then there's the inboard uh, landing light you see right there. All right, now you're looking at the front of the engines here on the starboard side. Now we're going to see if these guys still got the same challenge over here as well. Yeah, somewhat. Anybody else got this model and said they had the same issues as well, please let me know. It turned a little bit, not turned like it should, but anyway, it is what it is. But you got the front visual view of the uh, landing bogey gears here on the side of the aircraft, which includes the landing gear struts as well as the landing gear doors. Now you're looking at the front of the aircraft where you got a better visual view of the cockpit windows, the windshield wipers, the radon nose cone, the front nose landing gear door, the landing gear lights inside of the landing gear doors, the landing gear struts, as well as the front visual view of the front nose landing gears. All right, now looking at the winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft, including the red navigation light you see next to this winglet wingtip device. All right, we're at the back of the aircraft here on the port side, and right next to the uh, Iris flag decal is the actual registration ship number, EI-EDY, which is this registration ship number you're looking at there. Registration ship number, EI-EDY. This particular aircraft is actually the third Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft that entered the fleet of Aer Lingus. And the first test flight on this aircraft took place on May 12, 2009 and was delivered to Aer Lingus one month later on June 12, 2009. This aircraft was also the very first aircraft in the Aer Lingus fleet that was actually painted in their updated revised livery scheme, which was unveiled to the general public on January 17, 2019. All right, we still at the back of the aircraft here on the port side, and right next to the registration ship number is the actual Irish flag decal, which happened to be this flag decal you're looking at here. And this flag decal represents the country where Aer Lingus currently operates from as the national flag carrier airline for the country of Ireland. 
All right, we stay at the back of the aircraft. What you're looking at is the tail fin of the aircraft, including the updated revised logo I mentioned earlier there, the partial registration ship number, and you see the nice little light green uh, cheat line you see displayed there as well. Now you're looking at the rear of the aircraft, and what you're looking at is the APU, which literally stands for auxiliary power unit exhaust hole, and it is a hole right there. As well as the entire aircraft from the rear view angle. Check it out. There it is. Awesome. Now you're looking at the starboard side of the aircraft where you see the front nose landing gears, the landing gear struts, the landing gear door featuring the partial registration ship number, DY on the uh, front nose landing gear door. You see the Peter tubes and the static ports, the Radon right nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows, the name of the aircraft, uh, Mangsine, as I mentioned earlier. The uh, updated revised logo of Air Lingus, the Air Lingus billboard title, as well as the front cargo container loading door. All right, now you're looking at the center of the aircraft on the starboard side, where he's got a side visual view of the landing bogey gears here, including the landing gear struts, as well as the actual landing gear doors. And more important, you're looking at the uh, General Electric CF6-80E1A4 turbofan type engines on this side of the aircraft, including the realistic engine cone there as well. Now you're looking at the green color looking winglet wingtip device on this side of the aircraft as well as the green navigation light you see displayed there right next to this winglet wingtip device. Alright, now you're looking at the back of the aircraft and what you're looking at is the nice looking cheat line right there, light green cheat line, the rear uh, cargo container loading door, see the uh, registration ship number, the Irish flag decal, the AFT bolt bin door, as well as the update revised logo displayed on this tail fin of the aircraft, as well as the partial registration ship number you see displayed there as well. All right, before I show you the aerial bird's eye view here, as well as the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft in full detail, please allow me to let you check out one feature, which is the actual rolling gear. Let's check it out. Rolls pretty good. So far, so good. It does tilt, and the front nose landing gear swivels there as well, as you can see there as well. So with no further ado, everyone, let's check out this aircraft model from the area bird's eye view. Let's check it out. All right, now you're looking at this aircraft model from the area bird's eye view. We're going to start at the front of the aircraft where you see the radon nose cone, the windshield wipers, the cockpit windows. Then you slide up this way, the top of the aircraft, we see a high-frequency antenna, the Wi-Fi box antenna. You see the Air Lingus billboard tiles as well as the corporate logo. Then you slide up this way, the anti-collision beacon light you see there. Another high-frequency antenna, and that's the satellite communications antenna. Another high-frequency antenna, and then that's the tail fin of the aircraft, as well as the horizontal stabilizer you see there with the little dot right there, as well as right there as well. Uh, the name, them little, little dots are actually called the luminaire lights, and the sole purpose of those luminaire lights is that they actually light up this tail here when it flies during nighttime. Now, let's check out the engines and the wings from above as well. There's the engine right there. There's the top of the wing, no wing walkway, but you got the flat, slats, aileron, spoilers, what have you, the warning information, and the fuel dump valve is in there somewhere as well as the wing wingtip device featuring the airline's logo. Now let's check it out over here. See the engines there, the top of the wing, no wing walkway, but you got the flaps, slats, ailerons, spoilers, what have you. The warning information, oh, there it is, the fuel dump valve, as well as the uh, winglet wingtip device that features the airline's logo on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, now you look at the undercarriage belly view of this aircraft model. And we're going to start at the front as usual. You see the radon nose cone, the A330-300, that's the aircraft variant. You see the crew escape hatch door. And you see the front nose landing gear door as well as the front nose landing gear. And then we slide up this way, the anti-collision beacon light, the hole where the stand goes in at, a, a high frequency antenna, the Gemini Jets logo, a couple more high frequency antennas. 
Then you slide up this way. The APU housing door as well as the horizontal stabilizers underneath. And then we're going to start at the um, gears right here. Yeah, they tilt. Okay. See the engines there. As well as the wings underneath includes the flap, slats, aileron, spoils, what have you. The registration ship number as well as the wing, wing tip device. Let's check out over here. See the engines there. The gears over here, do they tilt? Yeah, a little bit. But you got the wings underneath, includes the flap, slats, aileron, supporters, what have you, fuel dump valve, as well as the wing, wing to device on this side of the aircraft as well. All right, since I show you this aircraft model from the bird's eye view as well as the undercarriage belly view in its entirety in full detail. Now I'm going to put on that nice little model stand I showed you earlier. So with no further ado everyone, here is the actual model on the stand. Check it out. Alright, fine got this model on the stand with no problem, no hesitation. As you see it being displayed in a takeoff landing position. Now I'm allow this uh, model to rotate in a clockwise rotation. First you're going to look at it from the port side of the aircraft, then the tail cams angle then the starboard side and then the front of the uh, aircraft as well as back to the port side of the aircraft check it out All right, before I take this model off the stand, I got it at this angle for a reason. And the reason is, is the actual magnetic gears that actually came with the model. So I'm going to go ahead and take them off, starting with the front nose landing gear. See there? The gears here on the port side, there. As well as the landing gears on the starboard side, there. Now, I'm going to uh, let you see this aircraft model in a Different angle in flight mode position. Let's check it out. All right, now you see this model being displayed in flight mode position without the gears. Now you got one or two options how you want to display your model from this point on if you choose to. If you want to continue to display it like this in flight mode position without the gears, that's fine. You see these uh, gear replacement doors inside this plastic bag I showed you earlier. That's the sole purpose of these gear replacement doors. So you substitute your gears while you display your model like this in flight mode position. Or you can do what I suggested because it adds more value to the model. Keep them in the gear down position. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and put these gears back on this model. Take this model off the stand and go ahead and wrap up this model review. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the seating configuration. The Air Lingus Airbus A330-300 Jetliner aircraft seats 317 passengers in a two-class configurated cabin layout. All right, everyone, here's the breakdown from rows 1 to 7, which will be from here to right here. You have 30 business class seats in rows 8 to 46, which will be about from here all the way back to the rear of the aircraft. You have an additional 287 economy class seats, which brings a total of 317 seats. And finally, Air Lingus currently employs this aircraft or have previously utilized this aircraft, the Airbus A330-300 jetliner aircraft on routes from Dublin to destinations such as Boston Logan, Chicago O'Hare, London Heathrow, Los Angeles, California, Miami, Florida, Malaga, Spain, Newark, New Jersey, New York, JFK, Orlando, Florida, San Francisco, California, Seattle, Washington, Toronto, Pearson, and Washington, Dulles, and from Manchester, England to Orlando, Florida, and from Paris Charles de Gaulle to Milan, Bergamo. Those are the routes. Well, everyone, this will conclude this model review. I'd like to know if you got this model or you plan on getting this model if you can get your hands on it. It's still available. Please snatch it while you can. I highly recommend it. So with that said, take care. God bless. Stay tuned. There's more model content coming. Peace.